Greetings, weary travelers. Come, warm yourself by the fire and let us regale you with mighty tales, tales of adventure, tales of heroism, tales of Tamriel. I'm your host, Jealous, and I am joined by the one, the only, Sleepyhead, a.k.a. Arkaneer. How are you? <laughs> well, 6.30 on a Saturday morning. Uh, I guess I'm good. <laughs> Uh, how are you? Shouldn't Ag? matter. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tired myself. And uh, I mean, to be Lies. frank with you, the reason why we didn't have a show last week was because we were ready for the show. <laughs> um, I think I even had Promethean. Well, let's, let's rephrase. Ark wasn't ready. Ark was away. Yeah, I was dating his old like. you know, <laughs> getting his elf ear extensions, hey. his highlights in his hair, because that's what all Anyway, so while he was over there, you know, at Altmer Beauty School, um, Promethean and Lotus and I were getting ready for a show. Well, we were talking, and my wife says to me, hey, can you clean up all the toys before we get home? Because it was right before Christmas. My mother had been off all week, and she decided to take my wife and son to some Christmas things. So I said, sure. Because she was going to wrap presents. I'm like, yeah, I can go up there. So I said, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to go up and, and do some cleaning of uh, uh, the upstairs. So I went upstairs, did a little cleaning, finished all the cleaning, and I'm like, all right, got a, you know 20 minutes till the show. Good. I'll just sit down here on the couch. <laughs> and I, that's where I passed out, and I did not wake up the rest of the time. You know. It was kind of funny as Promethea and I kind of messaged each other back and forth. I was like, I think Egg's asleep. He's like, yeah, I think Egg's asleep. I was like, I think I'm going to sleep. And he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to sleep. Too. Yeah. It was like 11 30, and I was like, yeah, I don't think the show is happening. Yeah, and I, I was like, like, I think he's I think dead. I think we're yeah, done like, for this week. Yep. I was like, bed is looking real nice right yep. now. Yep. Yep. Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you at all because eventually it just hit the point where I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. And... Well, to be <laughs> fair, if you did call me at like 1130, we're like, all right, let's do the show. It's like, oh, man, I don't know. Could we hear it be for more than the next 15 <laughs> minutes here if we're starting now? I was going to be in pajamas if you had called yeah. at 1130. Oh, yeah. I was like, the pajamas are on and there's that's how I'm going to look in the show. Yeah, that's how this show is going to go. No, I'm, I would be okay yeah. with that. I understand. Festive holiday attire. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Indeed. I mean, I don't remember the last time I wasn't in pajamas during this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually fair. I don't think I've ever seen yeah. Ark outside of pajamas ever. <laughs> like, ne I like never. never. had a show at a normal time. Actually, no. <laughs> Sunday morning for you. The, we did that for a while. I think I wasn't in pajamas during those, because it was afternoon for me. But right. Other than that, yeah, I just crawl out of bed and just make my way in front of the camera. That <laughs> <laughs> like an army crawl to the, to the camera. <laughs> That'll be fine. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like I, I really mm -hmm. do feel like that's exactly what happens with arc and uh yeah <laughs> anyway we've got a a fairly fun show i i hope planned for you guys uh there hasn't been a lot of news mostly due to the fact that it's been the holidays but we do actually have a letter from uh rich um, that we will go over and of course then we also have some tales and a little bit of wild speculation, because what would an end of year show be without wild speculation? I mean, exactly. Quite frankly, of course. I, I don't know. So, yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah, embarrassing without wild speculation about all the things that we <laughs> predict that likely won't happen. Oh, yeah, I have no, to yeah. be very wrong, and then it'll be successful. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I'm not gonna get any of it right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right let's go ahead and start the show guys oh but before we do that i always have to give a shout out to our amazing patrons over at patreon.com slash dungeon crawler network who help support the show each and every month including our two newest patrons eric d and kenneth s thank you so much for that uh as well as all of our awesome twitch uh subscribers make sure if you are doing those things that you join our discord um, and link your patron and your Twitch to your Discord so you gain access to our DCN supporters channel where you get access to all of our shows at least 24 hours early, sometimes even longer. 
So that way you can kind of go, hey, I listened to the show and you didn't. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's always fun. Um, yeah. yeah. And of course, we have our exclusive post shows that we do from time to time. I highly doubt it'll happen tonight because Ark's about ready to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, those are also available and they are a lot of fun as well. So definitely check those out. If you're interested in supporting us in other ways, you could do that by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes so people know that we are a real podcast, that we say real words, and sometimes they matter. I will get to read uh, iTunes reviews whenever they fix them. They are still sort of busted. And they busted again. Uh, they're still not showing up correctly. Like, Yeah, they seem like they break more frequently than they work. <laughs> they were good for quite a while. It's really just been fairly recently that they've that they've kind of died. Um, but, like I said, as soon as they get those reviews... I know we have reviews, like because it's saying that we have mm. reviews, but I can't see them yet. So, mm. unfortunately, I will definitely get to the reviews as soon as I get a chance to actually see them. So definitely going to do that all right now it's time to hop onto the show and i think i'm going to make promethean read that letter i can read it awesome. yeah arc's a little sleepy yeah <laughs> uh so for those of you um that if you haven't seen this it came out on december 19th uh and it's the this is a letter from rich lambert who's the creative director um basically just a summary on 2018 and everything that's gone on so far so let's get right into it. He says, 2018 has been another great year for ESO. We saw the release of two new DLC dungeon packs with Dragon Bones and Wolf Hunter, a new story DLC with Markmire, and of course, the year's big chapter release with Somerset. We constantly challenge ourselves to create content that provides compelling new stories, visuals, and challenges, while at the same time giving you the chance to delve into the heart and soul of the many different peoples and cultures that reside in Tamriel. Both Somerset and Merkmire are worlds apart from the locations you have already explored in the Elder Scrolls Online, and it's both humbling and extremely gratifying for us to see just how much you all love these new adventures. Thank you. I'd also like to extend a big thank you to everybody here at Zoss who worked their butts off to pack so much into a single year. I'm extremely proud of what we've achieved in 2018, and it's clear that the community appreciates it too. Speaking of the ESO community, 2018 was also a great year for meeting and engaging with you, the players. Starting with the Twitch live stream announcing Somerset, we had a blast showcasing ESO and talking with the community at PAX East, PAX, PAX West, E3, QuakeCon, GamesCon, TwitchCon, RPC, PAX Australia, and for the first time, Armageddon in New Zealand. These events are important to us. Uh, because they're not just a chance to show off our latest content or release. They're also an, an opportunity to have some real face time with the people that make ESO such an incredible experience. We also loved seeing everybody come together for the year's different in-game events, including all the amazing community responses we saw to Summerfall. Uh, and if you guys, Summerfall was the achievement to get oh, the, yeah, the housing and yeah and yeah i i, I um, thought you messed up your word there i'm like summer fall no yeah that's no i actually that's why i clear because when i read it the Don't first time i was like what was summer fall and then i was like oh wait uh that was to get the <laughs> sigic villa yeah um and the addition of indrix and indrix feathers in q4 when the eso community works together for an in-game cause or out magic happens whether it's guilds dedicated to new or developing players detailed guides or kick-ass streams I believe we have the most welcoming and dedicated community in online gaming. Hashtag ESO fam isn't just a catchy hashtag. It's a truth in our community, and it is something very special to all of us here at Zoss. 2019 is almost upon us, and it's going to be a huge year for the Elder Scrolls Online. I can't say too much just yet, and it's been incredibly difficult to have to hold back details, but ESO will be five years, five years old next year, a huge milestone for us and the community. As such, next year's story and adventure will be something truly special for all Elder Scrolls Online players. We are so excited to be able to share it with you soon, and we can't wait to see how you all put the pieces together starting early next year, and early's underlined, so I'm assuming this <laughs> is like soon. I say this all the time, but I mean it earnestly. Thank you. From everybody here at Zoss, we truly appreciate all the passion, support, and dedication the ESO community brings. Without you, we wouldn't have... We wouldn't be able to do the things we do, and the game wouldn't be what it is today. You have all made ESO the best online community and experience available today. 
Cheers to you all and prepare for one heck of an adventure in 2019. Rich. Ooh. You know, and I, I, I honestly did forget about the summer. Fall. I did too. It just. Well, that, that was just it. It was like, and I, I was so impressed because that's such a catchy name that I don't think mm-hmm. a lot of people caught on because I sure as hell didn't when it first came out. It was like summer, fall. Oh, right. It's summer and fall, fall. is how it, I was like, that's yeah. more clever than I feel like this was acknowledged for at the time because I was like, that went over my head for like a week. And I was like, yeah. wait, <laughs> that's really good marketing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I And ironically, like I'm working on like a cool housing project in the Sidic Villa. And I like it doesn't even cross my mind that that was like a community event that right I like chartered <laughs> yeah. I like carried people around. Oh I'm yeah, like, yeah for the Pathfinder. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that was awesome. I thought it was a very heartfelt letter, personally. Yeah, no, it it's it, and with them they usually I mean business stuff aside because you know you need to make your living, but it's like they mm-hmm. do generally seem or genuinely seem like they enjoy it from when I've met them or whatever. It's like, they, they're not like at no point did it seem like they were just like, Oh yeah, this is just like what we do. It's just Mm -hmm. like at PAX East. It was like, Oh, hold on. Let me grab you guys some beers. What do you drink? Tell us why you keep screwing up our dungeon mechanics. (laughs) All right. Well, that's not what I expected. (laughs) Right. Tell me how you keep breaking my game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Uh, you know, and for a year-end wrap-up letter, see, it, that's not the road ahead letter. That was from, no. That's just no, a letter. It's, yeah, it's just like a thank you. Yeah, like yeah. for not being like a crappy community, like yeah. so many <laughs> gaming communities are. I can one hundred percent agree with that. <sighs> yeah, you being involved with some. I mean, I'm not gonna bring up the fact that I may or may not play like the most hated series on the internet at the moment with Fallout because that community went from we love everything to everyone who plays this game is the worst and we hate everything. I'm like, wow, that was a quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... There is something very welcoming around the ESO community that quite honestly I've taken for granted until mm-hmm. such time as I've no, started yeah. branching out into other MMOs again and realize wow they all suck <laughs> well, yeah comparatively yeah because yeah, even when i used to do like mlg battlegrounds and stuff like that for like call of duty mm-hmm. and counter-strike and stuff and i remember being part of that and i was like oh man yeah this is just how things are and then i've been playing this so long i was like oh man everybody's still like nice to each other and helps each other out or whatever and then like i said i switch off to anything else i'm like oh well, Wait, this, this, yeah. this is pretty aggressive. That's right. I forgot yep. all about it. Oh, that. yeah. That's a pocket of positivity amongst everybody currently trying to kill each other. Yeah. There was, uh, this is a funny story. I'm going to have to bleep half of this out, but this pretty much does sum out <laughs> the majority of, of other games. I was watching a stream for Atlas. I don't know if you guys have heard of Atlas come out. Mm. It's complete trash. But regardless of that, <laughs> just talking about the community, this new streamer gets on. He's trying to figure his way out. He washed up on an island, walks onto the island, and literally the very first thing he sees is a sign that another player put up that says, F off, C U N T. <laughs> awesome yeah right that's great welcome to our game world to, wow. literally the first thing he saw was that sign and it's like whoa well i that feel is... all warm and welcome right off the bat yeah like yeah right. yeah i mean the only time in eso that you kind of get that is i always try to forewarn people if they've never been to cyrodiil and i'm bringing them in with me for the first yeah. time i'm always like <laughs> yeah things right. are less positive in this world <laughs> but like oh really and then less... zone chat they're just like oh i was oh, just gonna wow. say zone okay, chat are we all on the same side it was like we are on the same side you're gonna want to probably mute that <laughs> like yeah zone chat can be a pretty negative i've noticed this a lot and it's less in like the people that i actually like encounter um Mm -hmm. because today i think i i bought some motifs and the guy the person was like oh let me do the math and i was like you know what here's just my offer like i'm not gonna go any higher or lower this is what i got for you and he's Mm -hmm. like oh cool thanks and i was like awesome and then i like gave him gave him the money and they gave me the motifs and they sent a little like thank you with a heart and i was like these are the people that i like to see in zone chat not the people like cursing each other i'm like right 
and it's so i think it's because i don't pay attention to zone chat so much in the pc because of like just being in the guild and whatnot Mm. it's i really don't i don't pay attention to the zone chat hardly at Mm. all so it's kind of rare that i even see these kinds of people um Mm. even cyrodiil i never felt was that bad like i've been in way worse Yeah. I've never had so like the one that I always use is a, a mark because like, again, you're all in the same alliance when you're trying to crown an emperor or whatever. Mm. And it's like, I know people had warned me like, oh, a lot of people are going to really dislike you. I was like, that doesn't really make any <laughs> sense because I give the team a huge buff if I ever get this. And when I got like the emperor thing, I didn't just get like in-game messages. Like some people were like, oh, awesome, you know, congrats or whatever. But, you know, a lot of them were with my group. So they were obviously like, okay, we were trying to help. Like, right. we weren't going to do this without us. So, like, hey, congrats. And then a bunch of people were just like, F off, you're trash. I was like, do I know you? Who are you? <laughs> and then I got separate ones just like on PlayStation where it was just like people being like, go kill yourself. I'm like, wow, that is aggressive. <laughs> it's like, also, who are you? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think that, I don't know. I guess that might also be just the part where people are just angry that it wasn't them. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. ironically though, the guy that like, cause I kind of had like a down to the final two. It was me and another person. Yeah. And he was solo doing it. So he was kind of wave like Zerg wave farming. Okay. Yeah. Which is more efficient mm. than you trying to flip the map with your own army type of thing. But if you can get around, well, we were really dueling it out and <laughs> Because the Zerg wave was my PvP group, mm-hmm. <laughs> they were like, "Okay, well, this dude is literally just surfing our Zergs because we had three of them going hitting different keeps to keep the other two alliances on their heels." They were like, "Okay, this guy is just surfing our points <laughs> to do this." <laughs> so they're like, "Okay, we've got a great idea. Suddenly, we're going to go attack their main gate." So he went with them, obviously, because it was the big Zerg farm. We yeah. went to the other ones. And then right before they captured it, they're like, all right, everybody pack up your siege equipment to see if he can do it himself. And they all just laughed. <laughs> and he was just like, what? And he was like looking around. And he got zero points while we captured two other keeps. So it put me ahead by like 50,000 points. Ooh. The thing ended and he sent me a message. He was like, so do you like know everybody on this server? Because I just totally <laughs> got like the D. I was like, yeah, sorry about that, man. I was like, they really didn't like you Zerg surfing. He's like, whatever, dude. He's like, that's fine. He's like, congrats all the same. Right. And I was like, oh, you're not super salty about this. I was no. like, I don't want to keep Emperor. I need to sleep. Like I've been on for 17 hours. I'm going to play for a while and then I need to go to bed. Right. I was like, do you want this? And he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I'll just tell him you weren't a dick. Like, that's easy enough. He was like, oh, the following day, I took a knee because I wasn't playing. He stepped in and Sever was just like, oh, yeah, we'll crown this guy. Absolutely. We so they crowned him. He's like, I can't believe you did that. I was like, you weren't a you weren't a jerk ass jerk. about you it. Like, I don't know what jerk. to like, it, it, You were nice about it. So I'm happy to try to like vouch for you, too. Like, yeah, right. Whereas if you told me to any one of the expletives that i was given it's like well, okay well yeah remind me to help you dude like right <laughs> right yeah so, it's a mixed bag mm-hmm. but you you For do sure. notice that the majority of the people who generally say that are so far down the list oh yeah oh yeah it, yeah i'm in 99th place i hate you it's like well dude you have a million ap before you're even in the top 10 like what are you so bitter about yeah you got you got a while don't worry about it <laughs> Right. So it was just like, no, it was kind of refreshing that the people that were in competition amongst ourselves were the nicest ones. It was the people, like you said, that are out of the race who are just bitter that they didn't get it. It's like, well, okay. They're bitter that they're so far out of the race. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people like that are jerks. And then you're like, oh, hey, like, no, no, don't do that. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, that was totally my bad. I know that happens a lot in battlegrounds. I see it. I've seen it in dungeons all the time. Oh, because really? I call people out on it. I had um, a DPS bully our healer into leaving, and I like checked the guy. I was like, "Hey, not cool." I was like, yeah. "That's not something we're gonna do." <laughs> and the other two people were on my side. They're like, "Yeah, that was a total jerk move." And the guy's like, "Yeah, I'm kind of sorry about that." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I mean. Like, it's like I, I don't know. It's got to be that wall of uh, um, just being anonymous behind mm-hmm. the, the wall of the internet. I think some people yeah. just lose track of it sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's sure. the 
anonymity of the uh, of the mm-hmm. internet age in general. People don't have any accountability. Uh, I often joke that our generation is the most deceived generation of all time. It, even and I tell my wife this because of uh, this is the funny part. Snapchat being the bane, no one really knows what anyone looks like anymore because everyone's filtered every three seconds. <laughs> Guilty uh, as charged. Yeah. <laughs> See, exactly. You're like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they yeah, got me. You got me, yeah. Every single photo you have is all now. Nothing of you originally. It's all Snapchat yeah. filters. You superimposed with a deer oh. or a teddy bear. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> The dog is my like go to. <laughs> I love that thing. Called him out, uh, knew it. <laughs> yep, you got me. Uh, Guilty. That's yeah, great. Fair. Yeah. Fair. That's great. All right. All right. That was cool. We had a little side tangent. Let's go ahead and move I mean, into that. That was a rabbit hole and a half. It sort of was. <laughs> that was not at all planned. Not at all in the summary of what we're talking about today. But hey, guess what? <laughs> What's Snapchat? I mean, oh. <laughs> What's up, the Barbara? summary of what we talk about is a lie anyway. Every show you say like, we have a fun show planned for you while there is absolutely no plan. <laughs> no yeah, planning is involved. We had well, a plan. We have a plan tonight. Yeah, we, what, what did it, actually, Mark, yeah, this you is may more have passed out in the very first couple minutes that we were talking about, <laughs> but we actually did say step for step what we were going to do. I get it. It's kind of hard because the way your head's facing it, your eyes could be closed <laughs> and I wouldn't know. <laughs> that's that's strictly placement yeah. <laughs> i'll be there and i'll keep sleeping he's just that was actually, just yeah, sitting I just like, realized mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. there's it do, it doesn't make any difference if i close my eyes or open my eyes no i, I <laughs> can't tell at all oh, that's awesome <laughs> oh oh wait are there tales of guarnier well doctor who dad yes funny you asked that <laughs> let's go ahead and jump right on into the tales and let's start with the tales of guarnier because that seems to be what the people want okay well um Yes, yeah, so I actually did keep track of the tales of Guarnier <laughs> because I figured people were interested. I got a surprising amount of side messages, people being like, hey, are you actually going to keep track of it? Well, I don't play alts, but I did, especially during this event. So, <laughs> so um, Guarnier is now level 24. Um, I did the event writs or uh, the New Life Festival things um, for him. My main character, which is how I figured I would do it. And then I had been selling the Ritz like we had mentioned because they went up, you know, they were worth a pretty penny. And um, then I found out that not only were they worth a pretty pretty penny and they started to spike in price for a while because I think people were really getting desperate. Um, Somebody mentioned... They weren't dropping that that much, though. No, they weren't. And on PS4, they actually went up and I went from selling them for 25k to 40k at one point um and people were like oh all right whatever because other people in zone were like 50k and i was like oh, i'll just undercut you and yeah. i was like is 50k like a thing and people were telling me to like get effed but then they'd also be like oh yeah i'll take it i'm like okay yeah uh-huh so <laughs> but they started to you know plateau and then now they're starting to go down a bit mm-hmm. but I figured I would sell them all off. I didn't care about the skin. Then somebody brought up the fact that there was an achievement as well, and <laughs> I can't give up an achievement. So I was like, well, I can't sell any more of these. Yeah. these. Well, you so only need I did them with Guaranir. Yeah. You do need 12. Yeah. Um, and I had sold, I think, eight of them and done none. Oh, so I was like, ooh, this was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Guaranir, unlike Ark, <laughs> has phenomenal RNG. Because out of the, what are there, nine mm-hmm. things? I think a so, day, yeah. yeah it's the nine races because they don't do Imperials. Cool. Um, he got me five new life writs, which is some fine RNG, um, which helped out a bunch. I got my skin just recently. And then I figured what was the best way to level up Goranir. And I realized I hadn't done the Somerset public dungeons. Uh, like <laughs> yes. the the gift right. i mean i've beaten them but you so can get you that took somerset cat. home or uh I go on your home yeah to go on, yeah i did i brought him back to his <laughs> homeland um, <laughs> mark i don't know why you're not pleased about all of them you look so proud <laughs> <laughs> um, so we went to the pirate one where you farm the cat yes. pieces yeah. yeah and me and a couple of my buddies grouped up 
and we were like, let's all farm this cat. So we all popped double XP potions. A bunch of them were trying to hit max level. And uh, yeah, we got Guaranir to level 24. Uh, I finished the cat thing. I built nice. the cat and then gave the rest of the pieces away or whatever. And now we have switched over to Guaranir is going to do the other public dungeon where you get the costume. I don't even know what it is. I know on Morrowind it was yeah, like Morrowind. the sixth house robe. Yep. yep. I, what is the one on Somerset? It's like the castle, like the city under siege. Uh, I, I have zero parts Sunhold? of it. Sunhold. Yeah, Sunhold. It's thank a, you. It's a, you get a, it's called the Sigic Glow Globe. Oh, I have no idea what it is. Mm. Oh, all right. I have no well, idea what it is. That will be, I assume, next week's Adventures of uh, Guaranir, as he will be running the loop there farming. Uh, you know, one but... day, one day <laughs> in the future, I'll get a job in Zenimax Online just to delete that, <laughs> just to delete everything you have. It's. <laughs> I just come on and there's literally nothing on my account. <laughs> All your achievements gonna are put, gone. Just gonna put one line of code in there. It's like <laughs> if Lotus of Doom, delete all. Yeah, then, then <laughs> delete everything. <laughs> oh man. And then I'm gonna turn every character Agelos has into elves as well, just for good measure. Are, are you telling I'm not me gonna you do anything don't to you, appreciate Tinta, you're... the tales of Guar? No. <laughs> oh. I, Why you got I? another pet guar from logging in? He got that like yesterday or something. Oh my god! He's gosh. got more guars. More guars. Even, he has so many guars. I can't even do anything with them anymore. <laughs> Market price of guars is dropping. <laughs> <laughs> so many guars. So many guars. Not Man. enough slots for them all. That's why. That's why we need to start killing them. It's exactly <laughs> what I've been telling. So many guars. No, it's, it's a horrible thing to say. Guars are <laughs> awesome. I actually just got my guar too. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I forget. I got a mini. Mean, yeah, a little I think LSD yes, guar. I, also, yeah. also, apparently, I am not alone on on the guar thing. As you guys said, I got support on our Discord and on YouTube. Okay. Although I said I would give them a shout out, but I forgot the name. So I'm oh <laughs> yeah, see you support Ark, and he doesn't even remember who you are. See, it's been <laughs> that's it's been a few that's very so Altmer of you. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even know why I come to this show anymore. Well, to be frank, neither do we, because you're always asleep in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> or flying the AD flag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. There's. Uh, not a lot of purpose to that seat anymore, it seems, because it's <laughs> just sitting there. Anyway, continue your story. <laughs> but yeah, so that was this uh, this week's Guaranir update. And then I guess the only other thing I really did, um, gameplay-wise, because things have been busy because of the holidays, yeah. even with the missed week. Um, I, you know, I've gotten to play some time on just relaxing some days and stuff like that. Um, I... <laughs> My my goal for the new year, we I still have not set foot in um Merkmire, <laughs> which is kind of weird. I literally haven't touched it yet. I don't and, blame you. That's cool. Yeah, and the the, the big thing is uh, I really want to do Black Rose Prison because I hear how brutal it is. Mm. And even though we've kind of gotten over it, because I don't like how the whole three DPS and a tank is becoming more elitist than I'm comfortable with. So like <laughs> It, because literally I'm seeing in zone chat, oh, dude, I can't believe you use another. I'm like, okay, I'm glad this method caught on, but like, we don't need to crap on people that use heal healers either. That's not the right. point. Like, but uh, I've heard that this is God awful. It is trying to do it that way. So, so I tried it. We plan on trying to do it. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to you trying it as well, because it's, it's much more worse than yeah. than the dungeons. It, That's what I've heard. I've heard it's really brutal. And um, what they basically <sighs> did is to try and make sure that it can't be done without a healer. Yes. Well, Which I'm then you shouldn't have had like, that drink with him because now he knows. That's exactly it. And to be fair, each of the dungeons has come up with creative ways to be like, oh, you don't want to use a healer, <laughs> eh? Uh, you obviously took the people who aren't using a healer to heart because you were coming up with some creative methods to make it that you want a healer. Right. <laughs> um, so my crew and I are, are planning on like, okay, we have to do this 
you know, at some point and see how we can do. Mm -hmm. But like we haven't managed to group up very well at all because of the holidays and everything. So everybody's now is like, okay, at the new year, we need to go in and actually do this. I because I haven't been... set foot there yet. And that's now the last, you know, I <laughs> just cleared all of that content in the game. Frost line. This is funny. Uh, Black Rose prison. Easy as pie. Vet. The pie is on, the fire, pie is on fire. You're, you're on, on fire. <laughs> and you're in a desert. <laughs> that's basically. I love so that. That is. We, um, he was actually, I t he's our tank all the time. Um, He's fantastic, but we tried to go in there, and I was like, you know what, guys? It was, I think it was release day of Merkmire. I was like, all right, we're going to go in on that 3 DPS in the tank. I was like, it's going to be a piece of cake. We're, like, kicking everything else, like, no problem. Yes. And we walk in there, and we're like, oh. I was like, <laughs> let me just switch to my healer really fast. And we, like, made it to the boss of mm -hmm. round one and got stuck. Really? We're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's I've tough. heard Even it's on like... normal. I've heard it is savage, so that that's just it. Yeah. A couple of the people in our that's group brutal. who we, we run with, and we just, like, melt things or whatever, and they're just like, oh, dude, like, it's just it's just brutal. It I'm is. like, wow, okay. So so we really want to try this and see mm -hmm. how it goes. Because, um, like, a lot of people had mentioned that the, or the Wolf Hunter DLC dungeons, mm -hmm. they were like, yeah. I don't, like, a couple people, I mean, it's been done a dozen times since then, but like originally at launch, people like some of these mechanics are not prone to that. And it's like we went in and they were challenging. Yeah. But I mean, we beat them like without a healer and it, yeah. it we beat them in one try. I mean, we wiped like here, they're trying to figure out the mechanics, but doing them blind, it was like, okay, these are good challenges, but it's like, well, yeah, we can do this. This thing I've heard, it's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Good luck. I'm like, Eesh. All right. Interesting. Yeah, but <laughs> Black Rose Prison basically doesn't let you do one mistake. You no. do one yeah. mistake, you are dead instantly. No, no work around it. Right. So it's... I'm very interested in that because I've been, yeah. we've been it's... skinning in different things and stuff so it's like we're kind of like okay let's do something super super hard again yeah um, this is challenging normal so i is... came up with a build just for it it's oh, really? like health full resistances full, full on everything pure mm -hmm. selfish tanking <laughs> no it's a dragon <laughs> So you're saying I should bring in Guarnier? No. <laughs> <laughs> Guarnier could clear it, I bet. <laughs> oh my god. Just displeased. <laughs> no words anymore. Nope. You just I'm done. I'm out. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I've I've said everything I could <laughs> to Edgelos throughout the last two years. And then you arrived. And now I, I, I'm like, my vocabulary is, is it's finished. It's done. It's, I don't have anything else. Okay. So now you get this, now you get a free pass for this. Because and just disdaining like say, sounds. <laughs> yeah, everything I could say to get back, I already said to Ejelos, and now I don't have anything to say to you, Lotus. <laughs> you were supposed to be my I should have showed up two years prior to get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were supposed to be my backup on the show, not, not the other way around. <laughs> no. Mistake bringing me on. See, your yeah. big mistake, he probably was on your side until you, you know, started bashing Guars every 10 seconds. Now, yeah, actually, Guar. Yeah, there's that's I, that, I, that I, I, I can see a correlation that, there. Yeah, yeah that, all, that all happened from that one stream that just turned into like the charity donation. Everybody was like, no, <laughs> no less Guars, no more Guars. Yeah. Ark's like, I hate Guars. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Beginning of the end. Yeah. All right. And what else have you been working on? And then the only other thing, like I had mentioned, I haven't been playing um, Merc Meyer, is I, I'm not a huge immersion person or like I don't role play. It's just not my thing, really. But when it's nice and cold outside, it just makes me reminded of Skyrim. So I've jumped back into Skyrim. Um, during the winter, I have a tendency to play it more. Same thing in the fall. I like to like do the rift and stuff and everything like that, just because it's fitting to what it looks like outside my window in New England. I just go outside. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like that. That's it. I'll go and chop wood outside in real life. <laughs> and then I'll come inside and I was like, oh, Skyrim, I'll chop some wood. Like, um, <laughs> 
So I have gone through, and the one thing of note from Skyrim was I completed the Thieves Guild again. I'm replaying through mm. um, the special edition on PS4 this time. God knows how many times I've beaten this thing, but this one happens to be that version. And uh, that is a really good quest line and like story and everything. The only gripe I have about it, which I kind of always forget exists, once you beat it and it's like, oh, this was really cool. Restoring the Thief Guild to its previous glory is miserable. <laughs> so you have to do the Radiant quests enough times per city that you get the special quest. Yep. And then you have to do the special quest that brings the merchant into the Ragged Flagon. And it takes forever and they're random and it's just I, yeah. like it collect 500 random dollars worth of crap and it's just like oh god <laughs> it's just like so you need to like drop them so you at least do two in the same city at the same time man that for such an awesome quest the end of that is super grindy and it's yeah. really just kind of like oh that's not a great end to an otherwise like really cool quest mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever done that <laughs> It's, it's really cool. Like it's, you finish all of them and it is awesome. Yeah, the ragged flagon looks totally different. So you know those oh. little alcoves that go around the cistern? Yeah. All of those alcoves fill in with vendors. Uh -huh. And then like the the guild itself like is like a bustling like it's all like, Yeah, they have more people like, in there and yeah, they have the banners so cool. from the different cities yeah. and you have a fence in each of the cities and stuff like that. It's it's really cool but it's just it becomes, I mean, it was obviously like, hey, look, we have Radiant Questing, but it was like, e okay, maybe less attention <laughs> to Radiant Questing because your normal writing is very good. This yeah. is very, very just generic. Well, same with the Stones of Baron Zaya. Stones of Baron Zaya wasn't just, as bad, though. I, it's not, I've bad. never done that. I've never completed it either, Ark. Mm. I, I've gotten like 18. <laughs> I've just never <laughs> finished. I heard you make like, so much money you can't sell all the gems after you beat it. Oh yeah, well that's true. <laughs> um, but the Stones of Baron Zaya isn't really hard because here's the thing, it's not like the Radiant Quest. They all have set yeah. locations. Yeah. So it's just, I think it's it's the time consuming aspect of it for me. Like I run the Radiant Quest because I think you can do it before you finish, if I'm not mistaken. So I run them like as I do the main. Quest. Interesting. So it's not so bad, but I could not be correct on that. I haven't played Skyrim in a, in a hot minute. I don't think I've played Skyrim since ESO has come out because ESO has pretty much been my Elder Scrolls fix ever since it came out. Sure. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, you just get perpetual new content pouring into yeah. it. You want to go to Skyrim, just go to Skyrim in game. <laughs> I know some people yeah. always tell me, oh, well, you could do that in Skyrim because of mods. I'm like, yeah, but it's not an official mm -hmm. mod, so it's a headcanon from someone else, and it doesn't always sure. fit Elder mm -hmm. Scrolls, yep. which is why I very rarely mod anything. If I do mod it, it's graphical. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I I don't really do quest lines. I don't really do armors or anything like that. I don't do any of that stuff because it's not canon. Mm -hmm. Right. Actually, because I'm like that as well. I don't mod really. Not because it's just not my thing. One thing that I've seen on a couple streams, and I know Casual Ranger uses it. Uh, <laughs> I love the ESO UI mod that makes it look like the Oblivion book. Oh. Oh, oh my God. It's so awesome. I love that thing. And there's one for ESO? ESO, yeah. It, it makes it not look like Skyrim. It makes it look exactly like, um, like the Oblivion page turning thing. Ah, wow, it's super cool. cool. The only cool part about Oblivion. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Zing. Oh my God. Oblivion is still hands down the worst Elder Scrolls ever. Really? It's uh, funny. I didn't play Morrowind, so I only can I love it. Sky it's my it. favorite. It's one of my favorite overall soundtracks, but yeah, I've played that one least than the others. I mean, I like it, but it's by I think comparison. I've, I think I've just got such like a connection to oblivion because it was my first elder scrolls game it was like my first video game in general um that sure. it's just like always held that kind of place one that's 
that's the exact thing with Morrowind fans as well. Because it's the first Elder Scrolls game most of them play. Yeah. Like it's 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 the nostalgia effect. Yeah. I mean, I I loved Morrowind. I will not deny this. I played it about fifty five hours within this year, actually. Uh, finally giving up to the insisting of people, but it's amazing. It's it's fantastic. It's I don't remember laughing that much <laughs> in any other game, um, but it's miserable as well. It's frustrating and it's it makes you miserable. It makes mm -hmm. you crawl. Like what is not being able to hit one creature <laughs> with a sword? Yeah. And the creature is absolutely like standing still. It's not doing anything, and you can't right. hit it. It doesn't know. Well, part of that's not because the best game. You're looking at a a game that was essentially how do I want to say this? Back in the day, that was all that you had. Most mm. computers couldn't do mm. more than that. So the 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 standard RPG tropes of the the dice roll were not uncommon and not really even yeah. frowned upon. Well, right. maybe not, but that doesn't make it that that doesn't give it an ex excuse sure and it make it the best Elder Scrolls game straight away. There are other things as well. I mean, yeah, the writing obviously compared to today's RPGs, not just Elder Scrolls, but uh any of the more recent RPGs, the writing is fantastic. And mm -hmm it's you know the challenge is there because there's no compass or whatever but that's that's mainly due to you know overall direction of the games that took so yeah i mean is it is it a great game yes is it the best elder scrolls game nah, <laughs> even on the so. official elder scrolls forms it was voted the best like <laughs> It's not just us saying it. It's, it's pretty much a universal I, fact. I don't care. What you are missing is everything I say about Morrowind and Morrowind fans having a nostalgia effect, I have for Oblivion. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, everyone has faults. I am I'm biased <laughs> as everybody else. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll just keep denying Morrowind's, you know. Being Clear the best superiority. And keep telling Go Blue and is being the. <laughs> All right. Do you have any uh, tales for us, Ark? Uh, I did like four Neve Life Festival things, okay. and well, five with today. So I have now eight event tickets. Hopefully, I will. Oh no, I still have seven. What happened to the one I did today? Oh wait. Oh no, wait. What? Oh, I didn't turn it in. Okay, it's, uh, <laughs> everything is all right. I haven't played ESO. I haven't played anything within the last two weeks. I just played, like, did some ESO daily, uh, the New Life Festival, just one quest to get my event ticket. Mm -hmm. And then I did play some Destiny, just a very little bit. But I've been mostly working and stuff. So, yeah, no, no Tales. I don't think so. All right. Promethean, what about you? Uh, I've got a little bit. Uh, so as I think I mentioned it briefly, but I've been working on a big project that I'm having a blast with for in the Grand Sigic Villa. Uh, I'm having the only downside is I need to go steal and pickpocket and fence like a bunch of stuff. And that's not something that I particularly enjoy doing. It's not that it's like I don't want to like, I don't have anything against it. It's just not an enjoyable aspect of the game for me. Okay. I, I don't know what it is. It's just something, like, the tedious aspect. Maybe because it's I'm farming it, and that's why. Uh, the other thing, this is kind of old, too. But I put probably close to 150 to 200 keys into the Troll King thing. Okay. And never got it. Yeah. Same sure. with the helmet. Never pulled it. And I ran the dungeon a good 20 times. Well, I think I even opened... How many keys did I open last stream? You did 13, like, I think, on stream. Yeah, didn't get a single thing either. Yeah, I, I dropped was... a decent chunk. Did you happen to try the new one yet? Because it's right back to where it was. I got it on I my third no key. Keys. <laughs> oh, I, I got it on my no third keys. key again. I was like, so oh. what was it about Troll King that was impossible? <laughs> yeah, I have no keys. There's a new and... one going on, like, right now? Yeah, I... um, Iceheart? 
Yep, from Dire Frost. I, yep, I bought the um. It's the still going today. like right now. Yep. It just started. Yeah, yeah. It, ju- it just started the new one. The Troll King's old. now I started. Mm-hmm. The weapons look like Stalrim weapons, like the Frostcaster so cool. on crack. Ooh. They are so it's awesome. It's so cool. I purchased yeah. the bundle today. Yeah. I'll, I got to log in and take Christmas. a look. Because mm-hmm. I yeah, have like very, very six keys that. or something like that just because of the dailies from. I've been desperately trying not to refer to them as cool just so I won't be into that horrible <laughs> frost joke. <laughs> but they, but yeah, they are. Yeah, but they, they they really do look awesome. It's mm, basically the, the like the stall rim or frost caster style, except mm-hmm. instead of being refined, it's kind of like ice shards Chunky. sticking out of it and stuff. Ooh. It also. Very like, nice. Um. It's like it's melting, so there's like steam coming off mm-hmm. of it too. Oh, it's so cool. Ooh. I love the, it. The um the bow for the bow and arrow, I think, is my. I really like, like the. Oh my god, that's so sweet. Yeah, the staff is really cool too. That's what I'm. I need to equip it on my dude. Mm-hmm. And then, I well, not since the event started because I've been doing the daily, and that's about all I get on to do. And in the process of trying to not get burnout from only doing the dailies every day i've been playing monster hunter so i've been trying to mix it up a little bit yeah we get a group for that (laughs) i didn't realize you also played monster hunter it's so much fun but i've been working on just some motif farming i've been doing black sacraments to try and get dark brotherhood and going into craglorn because i recently discovered i can solo a lot of the content in there Mm. and then just getting trying to get my yokudin motifs since they're wicked expensive and i'm not paying that I never Since understood I, why those those stayed so expensive. I don't think people go in and do it. Yeah, they they actually, that's think, exactly I what mean, it is. Yeah, some of them are really tricky. Like to do uh, the Ronnie Za School of Warriors, you still need four people. There's no getting around it, right? Because there's mechanics that prevent you from doing yes. stuff. Yeah. Uh, actually, that might be the only one that's. There's a couple of them, like Skyreach, um, the Catacombs. It helps to have more than one person. Yeah, it does, because you can get boxed in really Can you explain really this easy. to me? Yeah. I don't even know about these. Oh, okay. Yes, I love. this is actually so... Craglorn is my favorite zone in the entire game. Okay. Like, it's... Not, it's... Love it. I love the story content, all of the, the little dungeon things. So, essentially, the entire zone is a dungeon... Um, so everything that you go into, as far as a lot of the delves, and then they're like the story places. I, I don't know what to call them exactly, but it's all four person content. So as soon as you like enter into it, so when I go into like Shada's tier, if I mm-hmm. have more than four people in my group, the first four people that open the door go in with me, and that's my group. So it's really kind of cool. Hmm. Um, well, it was. But, it's because it was designed as an adventure zone. Yeah. Which was right, originally yeah. the the concept, Mark that, Meyer idea too. Yeah, but it was oh. the concept that was originally there, and it was actually something I I've always complained because they kind of took the MMO out of it. But every zone other than the main zone that we have now, like the starter areas, was meant yeah. to be an adventure zone. Right. Everything that but was supposed to be like released after well. that was supposed to be a group type adventure so questers would actually have to group together yeah that's exactly what this is Mm -hmm. so then all of the quests for each of the places are repeatable like an unlimited number of times Mm -hmm. so the coffers that they drop um you can you have a chance for yokudin motifs so i've been going in there and shada's tear drops like a purple coffer and two blue ones, so I typically will farm that once, and it takes me about 45 minutes, um, and I'll just knock that out really fast. Because every type and, of Yakuta yeah. I've ever gotten is just by doing Hellroth Citadel. Yep, you can get it mm-hmm. from those two. It's just the coffers that drop in Craglorn that have a chance. Yeah, any so. Craglorn coffer. Mm-hmm. I honestly yeah. thought it was only from the <laughs> trial, not well, actually pro- anywhere else. So that makes me wonder if when you originally did Craglorn, the coffers maybe weren't even in there yet because I don't believe they were at launch. They turned those things into repeatable quests because I don't think they were when they first launched. I mean, that was a long time ago, so I might be remembering that wrong. But I believe they became repeatables. Interesting. Not, yeah, because originally, like, if you did Shada's Tear or whatever, 
you did it and i think you were just done with it like a normal quest yeah or like a normal right, delve. delve yeah and then they were just like oh well here's a motif now you can repeat this because it's also a good experience mm. and stuff like that so i yeah. unless i'm just totally remembering that wrong which is a distinct possibility um <laughs> i i think that was added later it um, might have been but even when i did it remember for the longest time i think it was like eight months or so where I wasn't even questing because my wife wanted to do it with me. Right. Hmm. So by the time she finally was like, go ahead and, and get caught up, I, there, there were like, what, Ark, what was it, like six expansions or something like that I had to go through? So, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even know if I even went back at any point just to even check. Because as soon as yeah. I was done, like, check, all right, moving on. Yep. Yeah. I definitely would highly recommend going back and doing Craglorn. It is it is fun. We did the Grey Passage a couple... It had to be like last month or month before. Mm -hmm. uh, that was super fun. I stressed everybody. You get like two hours to go and find these um, six or eight tablets in different delves. And I just like, I was like, all right, guys, I don't know how this is going to go. I was like, we got to be on our A game. Like, don't even clear the delve. I was like, let's just get in and get out. And that was a blast. Uh, there's a bunch of fun stuff to do there. And there's all kinds of repeatables too. Hmm. There's one where you have to go kill like three people that are part of the skill core or the gray passage is a daily repeatable. There's just a whole bunch of them. And it's a really, I really enjoy it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go check that out again. Hmm. Yeah. You probably hmm. like it. It's they're well done. Some of the, the main elves slash dungeons are pretty elaborate too. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, again, yeah. they were, the Craglorn was one of my favorite zones as well because it was designed as an MMO zone. It was yeah. meant to be something that took a while that you did with your guild, not a solo questing adventure. Yeah. Right. So, yep. all right, cool. Um, well, we're actually nearing near the end of time, so we should probably move on. Do you have anything else for us? No, okay. that's all I got. Well, then I guess let's go ahead and wrap up tonight with one of our final things we were going to talk about, because really all my tales was just the the fun that was uh, mm. the holiday and spending like twenty thousand <laughs> on freaking <laughs> uh, new writ or the new life writs because they weren't so dropping. many writs. Yeah, so many writs. I have yeah. them all. Which, by the way, I realized I used to think I had a lot of recipes. But, like, the <laughs> crafting recipes for furniture, apparently I don't have a whole oh, bunch yeah. of them. There's so many. Yeah, I picked up, like, yeah. Brett and Bed. I'm like, oh, this won't be a problem. Where is it? I, yeah. How do I not <laughs> Why have Why can't this? I make a simple common Brett and Bed? What is that? Me? Yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, how do I not have this already? Oh. Yo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... That's where that is. But anyway, uh, before we wrap up, guys, let's talk a little bit about what we're hoping to see because this is the final episode of Tales of Tamriel in 2018. Gasp. <laughs> I did that on our other show too, and I swear I got like 20 responses like, are you guys done? Because I said, this is the final episode. <laughs> and then in small letters you know, of 2018. <laughs> Of 2018. Yeah, and I got a ton of messages going, you guys are ending? No! I'm like, no. You didn't read the yeah, whole Yeah, you line. don't get to do that again, though. You you already no. pulled that move once. <laughs> My mom Back did in... that the other day. It worked on you uh, three. <laughs> that <yeah>. It did. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yeah, I was... My so that either was... says you're incredibly you know, gullible or you don't listen to my other show. Touche. <laughs> you got this again. Lurking for the other show counts, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> see how it is. All right. Caught you guys. Let's uh, see. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what we're hoping to see from ESO in 2019. Anyone have any theories? I know we have a new chapter coming out. Let's start with the chapter because we know they're going to okay. do a new chapter because yes. it's a good moneymaker. They get to resell yep. another box, right? Yeah. 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 Plus, I was going to say people love those things. Uh, you you yes. know, even though I've had a hard time getting back into, uh, into uh, ESO, mostly because I just have no desire to log into Merkmire. I, yeah, that killed yeah. it for you. Yeah, it really did. Like, I was fine up until I got the Merkmire, and I just cannot do Merkmire. 
Oh, it's, I love it. But Argonians and I get along well. So. <laughs> yeah. I already have all the leather boots I'll ever need, so I don't really need to go in there again. Um, <laughs> but where do you guys think we're heading? For a cha- Got to be chapter. Daggerfall. I mean, the chapter has to be Daggerfall related. That was kind of my thing. So I, yeah. I like the idea of Elsewhere just because they've done so little with it. That's like what I was saying. Really, never have seen too too much, Mm-mm. but like you said, Ark, it's it's been in a pattern. Yeah. Orsinium was Daggerfall, and I mean yep. that's essentially a chapter before they were called yeah. chapters. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they had Orsinium, then they had Morrowind, then yeah. they had Somerset. Well, theoretically, we've done one in each alliance. We should be back to Daggerfall, I would assume. And elsewhere would be like Al Mary, Al Mary. And that's just, I mean, that's yeah. just a sin against yeah. nature to begin with. But <laughs> at, the, at the same it time, that away. really seems weird that they would do that, especially because it'd be so close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't It's. I mean, we're in Daggerfall, it could be. Yeah, I mean, Daggerfall, be if you look at it, map. it's one of the... Right. Yeah, it, you could go to Alakir, hey, like lower down in lower, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, what about what about the uh, what is Azure's Crossing or whatever the place where oh. supposedly Elder Scrolls Six is supposed to be? Yes, Azure's Crossing. That that would be how funny would that be? Like, yeah, don't worry, yeah. guys, we've got a clearly not Elder Scrolls Six, exactly. and they just cover it as like a chapter in ESO arbitrarily. Mm-hmm. Right. Where in the map that would be? Is it right above Bangrokai? Bangkorai? Uh, no, Bang I think it's lower. Uh, the name. It's 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 yeah, it's lower down, is I it lower? think. Lower. I think it's Hold like on. south. I need a map handy. Yeah, damn it, I, I was just, just talking about it. Because it's, Cause it's oh in between God. the High Rock area and... Yeah, I need a map. I would not be able to this. Rock. <laughs> Pull up the map, guys. I, well, I while you guys are looking at the map, map, not this map. Elsewhere isn't been filled in. There's a lot of no, of, of and that's whatever the two huge. kingdoms are. But right, we and also I, have Skyrim areas. We haven't seen. That's an, uh, yes. I was thinking about that too. I mean, Falkreath is literally a dungeon. Yeah, but they could still unlock a lot of Falkreath. But even if they don't unlock Falkreath, yeah, um, you have all of uh, White Run. You have the Hazel March. Uh-huh. You have yeah, uh, Markarth, Markarth, which is like one of the coolest design cities in any video yeah. game. And I mean, <laughs> you, you already have essentially a lifelong protagonist there, which are the uh, the Witchmen, the Reach. Of the right? Yeah, yeah, you got uh, uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. So no, that's a huge portion of the map. Um, it is all right. I, mean, I can I mean, see there... White Run being a DLC. Well, so and then from... go ahead. So, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I know that, and I don't know, this could be total crap, but um, <laughs> they... Oh, this might be a spoiler, though. There's a Redguard sailor that you encounter in Merkmire, and he says that he's going to sail west. So that's oh, what a lot mm. of people are hinging where the next um, I, yeah, I know chapter may take place. Yeah, but that's a lot of the map. <laughs> I mean, right? Yes. right. Yeah. Yes. Also, yeah. So I don't know, but that's a possible. I mean, so that would. I'm gonna throw be... something else out here, completely just nuts. <laughs> what about if they sent us to? Uh, um, Akavir. No, not Akavir. If he's heading oh. west. <laughs> um, Pandanima. <laughs> Pandanema or whatever it is. Oh, the Pandonia. Uh, or... yeah, yeah. What is the slowed Pan- place? Thras. Uh, Thras. Thras. Yeah. Oh Thras. man, Thras. I would. I love those. If slowed they gave us another are... continent, that might... would be weird. That would be crazy. Uh, that, that is that... some off the wall stuff. But I would. Yeah, that would be pretty crazy. They would have all of my money. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they. I mean, again, I don't think they would probably do it entirely because of that but they mess somewhat with the planes of oblivion i would they say. could but again it's always been part of something else like mm-hmm. here's a zone you're in 
also hears a part of Oblivion, with the exception of Cold Harbor, which is yes. like the it, toward the story. It's just like, okay, here's all of Cold Harbor. Well, you kind of the the, I mean, the Daedric realms are infinite space. They can right. essentially create forever and never be breaking yes. canon. Right, yeah, and I mean, yeah. so many of the dungeons go with the Deadlands. I mean, how many times do you go to the yeah. Deadlands? It's just like, oh, look, an Oblivion oh. Gate, we're in the Deadlands. Well, yeah. let's, it, yeah, you know. But, like, they could do some pretty cool... Everglow looked really cool. Mm -hmm. I love cool. the Everglow. Mm -hmm. that, I think that's a really cool design. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, they could do an Oblivion Plane expansion as well without breaking the cycle. So that yeah. would be three three faction expansions and then one Oblivion Plane yeah. and then three faction chapters again. Yeah. That wouldn't break anything. The other thing is that whatever Merkmire should lead into the next chapter in some form. Have they though? Like I haven't played I haven't. the end of it, so I don't even so know. I finished yeah. it. However, I have also never seen the connections to the next like expansions when I've played them. They are usually very sub subtle though. Like right. it's so I not... Oh yeah, except for at the two. end of Dag or uh the Dark Brotherhood where she's like, I'll see you in March. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yep, totally went over my head. Just so we're all clear, I missed it because this is. See, now you're making me have to go in and play just because I know they're going to be. Le There's got to be some sort of hint towards the next expansion. Well, they always telegraph whether you realize. I mean, sometimes it's been where they're just like slap. Here's where you're going. Right. Yeah. Other times it's been very subtle, where it's like when uh -huh. you look back, it's like okay, well, you kind of told us exactly what to happen, and then it happened. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I'm wondering, I wasn't, nobody really told me anything about spoiled, but like nobody was like, oh man, where do you see dot, 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 because it tells you this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, you know, some of the other ones, it was just like, ooh, okay, <laughs> this is, you're telegraphing this pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I would, I actually want a story where Meridia is the, enemy like Mer meridia is the is the one we fight against we did this time yeah if you sure read the book um, no, no, no see ex no we, i read the book that's why i want okay, that story yeah, exactly i that's want the I'm continuation the, of that story. yeah oh, if you but, read the book they paint her as not all that she says she is or oh, that you oh, yeah. see her as i mean because right, they're all pretty self-serving yeah. she just oh, happens to sure. be self-serving the same way that also usually coincide <laughs> with races i mean think yeah. about yeah. it uh she sort of is an antagonist in uh um the knights of the nine because of umarel yeah, the unfettered so. mm -hmm. yep yep you know so she's kind of in direct opposition of of the player character in that case. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's I just, mean, none of them are just straight up good. No, no. Uh, yeah. A couple that are yeah. just straight up horrific, yeah. but, <laughs> like, <laughs> but even the good ones aren't exactly good. It's right. just, they're more neutral and sometimes it aligns better. It, yeah. The yeah. thing that they also, this is going into some really, really interesting lore. When you're talking about the Daedric princes, there's not really a concept of good and evil with the Daedric right. princes. And right. actually that's one of the things you look at, when you're dealing with them in um, uh, the, the the way that the Dark Elves look at them, there is no, yeah. we apply the moral of what's good or bad, not necessarily mm -hmm. them applying that. Right, since yeah. murder is yeah. technically like acceptable in certain circumstances, assassination, right. it's just like, normally that would just be considered taboo. Like, okay, you don't do that. It's like, well, there's circumstances where that's okay. <laughs> like, you can kill if you really yeah. feel like you should. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would I would like to also see um, from Wolf Hunter, I would like to see a vampire dungeon personally. Oh, hmm. The way they did like the werewolf yeah. dungeon. Do Even like if they don't, a don't they have a Snapchat like filter for that? <laughs> I'm just bashing everyone tonight. <laughs> I'm on fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so even if they don't revamp the skill, revamp. Well, uh, that I one. see what you did there. <laughs> um, even if they don't redo the skill line like they did for werewolves, because I know that they adjusted some things. Yeah. I'd like to see the dungeons. I think it would be cool. 
Yeah, well, vampires, it'd be nice if they weren't a requirement for so many things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. specifically DPS, it is hard to not justify being a vampire if you're damaged. It's just like yeah. knocking unless off your stamina. Well, unless you're yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then I have to convince people that stamina is not trash for certain modes. And I'm like, oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Like, <laughs> yeah. I rock stamina. I some of my some of the best people I've had on my team run stamina. It's like I don't understand the stigma against stamina. Like because magic is easier. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Magic right. is for for well, never mind. I won't say it. <laughs> that could have been insanely, people... insanely offensive to people, so I well, won't say it. Actually, isn't stamina nightblade like the highest damage yield currently yes. yeah that's what yes. i thought however like... however when you are stamina nightblade you are close range to the boss and that gets you killed unless you are extra extra careful you're so, not a bad yeah. right but well <laughs> the other thing that is kind uh -huh. of funny though is if you're a magicka dk damage most people account for it. it's like okay you're magicka whatever One of our buddies plays magicka dragon knight and he's like um i don't really classify as the magicka that you keep talking about because i need to be in this thing's face constantly yeah. oh yeah if you're a magicka templar yeah. you're still up there anyway because you're <laughs> that's just it yeah and he gets classified they're like oh what the heck we're not having people hit from range in like you know ethereum archive or whatever he's like you counted me for range and i'm not character i'm just magic <laughs> he's like those aren't the same thing yeah right. you still need to be fairly close for both uh dragon knight and um templar yeah you're yeah. pretty much melee anyway it's just not taking your stamina it's taking exactly mm -hmm. yeah because you, even as a, a magic templar you're still using uh puncturing sweep like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you do have a lot of survivability in that because it heals based on the amount of damage you do. Um, right. So that helps negate from the healer side of things. It won't protect you from a one-shot, but it does help. But it, yeah, keeps your sustain of life up. Yeah. So can I say something a little unorthodox here? Uh, I know we, we are always saying about how, uh, going back to the main conversation about what we're expecting to see, I'm yeah. going to say something that I think they really need to take in. They need to start adding some new systems into the game. Story is great, yeah. and that's one of the best things yes, they their do. Their writing is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, uh, not a lot to do outside of that to keep people once the story's done. Yes. I, like, oh. I felt Battlegrounds when they brought that in. <laughs> Although, oh. I mean, I like Battlegrounds. It's fun. That was a huge addition for a lot of people and added yeah. tons and tons to do. I, However, I, I think I played that was Morrowind. <laughs> like, yeah. that, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, that yeah. was it. Mm -hmm. Somerset, we got jewelry crafting. That's not a new system. No. Like, that's just a new crafting yeah. thing. The, yeah. the story, like I said, I don't want them to touch their story because their story is amazing and it's one of the best mm -hmm. in any MMO. But... Mm -hmm. Like I, I've been telling people, I've been playing Amazon's New World, uh, which is still in NDA, so I can't say a whole lot about it, but it's a sandbox. Mm -hmm. And there's no mm -hmm. questing, and yet I'm enthralled because there's always something for me to do when I log on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I have to do this. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do this. Things to keep you playing, and I don't think ESO... ESO, especially now that they're hitting five years old, right? They're starting to hit the point where... Yeah, they're gonna. You've got the systems down. Yeah. Now it's literally just adding story, and you do the thing you've been doing. Yeah. Well, I hope they don't do that because that's gonna drive more people away yeah. than not. No, no, right. But that's I like as in that's kind of what the situation looks. Like oh yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, a lot of MMOs tend to do that. I, Final Fantasy XIV has buckled down on their. Uh, this patch is a dungeon, this one's not, you know, like it's it's a very predictable cycle, which is mm -hmm. nice for people who are doing that. But a lot of what you're seeing is people are logging on for the for the patch and and that's it. And I'm sorry, right. if you play this at all somewhat heavily, how many hours do you really get out of, of Merkmire? 
Sure, it's mm-hmm. you do you do however long it takes you to complete the storyline content, and then you're done. So you jump yeah. on for expansions, and then you're gone until the next expansion. Yeah. Yes. And I I don't know I I mean I guess that's somewhat sustainable for them, but I just know for myself as a player. I need to have more systems in place, things to do outside. Going forward. What system? What like what 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 system could they add now though? Because I can't really think of anything. Well, they they did a good I step with the Indrik mount, system. something to actually well, yeah, go for. Yeah, their events have been interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. another big one, which although you own everything, <laughs> that's what, people are all about that housing end game that was a that was a nice addition oh, yeah. when they did yeah. that mm-hmm. yeah. but again that's another thing that's been around for a while like yeah, going forward exactly. they need more of these because like the Cyrodiil changes the the new ones with the collapsible bridges or whatever mm-hmm. okay novel idea that's not so far i've actually <laughs> barely seen it. i've messed around with Cyrodiil a couple times so like okay mm-hmm. these are like non-existent like i don't even notice these they're just broken. <laughs> okay yeah, fine yeah. it's just less travel routes nothing else yeah i i think a revised justice system would be kind of cool i would love to have Something. them bring back the justice system that was originally planned the other oh, whole the... justice system yeah yeah the old justice system or yeah. if they actually bring in the spellcrafting thing from Nick Conkle or whatever it was yeah. who originally had it. I don't know how <laughs> yeah, that would just yeah. blow the game up. When I first heard about that, I was like, yeah, yeah you're not going to want to give me that type of power. <laughs> no, <laughs> there'll be I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> or, yeah. I just, I feel like I mean, just standard story isn't going to be enough to hold players because eventually no, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, for the life of the game. Yeah. That, that, that premise of, um, logging in doing the story and then coming back every three months or whatever for the next dlc you know if if you all you do is play a game right like i don't know how long mm-hmm. did it take you for Methian to actually finish um Merkmire in hours um hours i uh just a guess i'd say main probably quest you know because the big main thing quest like, probably repeatable. took me like two bleh. hours total okay and that yeah. was me, that was honestly me taking my time and i i really liked the argonian so i was like re, mm-hmm. like listening to the dialogue exploring all the options like taking my sweet time with it sure i didn't group with people i did it all solo did everything by myself so let, let's just say 15 yeah. hours let's say yes. 30 yeah. hours okay 30 yeah. hours to finish a, a dlc sure if you are playing even even a small amount uh, three three days, uh, you know, or three hours a night. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't have anything else, you're still done in ten days. Yep. You still mm-hmm. have, you know, eight week, no, nine weeks still to go. The mm-hmm. big problem that they're gonna have going forward with that model is people will stop playing and they'll come back until they get something else that holds their attention, and then it becomes a question. Of, it's kind of like what World of Warcraft's experiencing. Do I want to come back for the expansion? Eh, it's probably just more yeah. of the same. I'm going to stay in. For me, New World. I'm playing New mm-hmm. World, and I'm addicted to that. When the next expansion comes out, am I going to get it? Well, probably. But if New World came out in- and I'm really into New World, I know I'm not going to play it. Is it really worth 10 hours? And then you're mm-hmm. losing those players. Right, or th- say three years down the line will that draw even be enough to pull you back if it's right. just like, okay, do I right. want to hear the next portion of the story? Granted, you're a little more invested at the lore, so you might even be skewed than most people yes. who are passing interest in it. It's like, oh, this is the only Elder Scrolls game I've played. It's just like, okay, yeah. that might not hold even if you don't have the like the legacy with the series prior to mm-hmm. as well. Right. And it is a good game, and the, that's what I'm saying. But at this point in the in the life cycle, five years you're probably not gaining a whole lot of new players. And I'm because an MMO has been out for that long. You need to start right. shifting at that point from attracting new players. Cause in five years, if people were going to try your game, they probably already tried it. And that's why I can't believe when numbers come out. I'm like, how is so like this many people haven't tried. And now granted that's total sales, not yes. current players. Yeah. So some yeah. people might be in for a month, but whatever. It's just like, it's amazing that this many years in people are even still bothered 
to try it in the droves that they do. It's yeah. kind of like, huh, mm. that's weird to me. Right. And and it, it could a lot be because console markets are really opening up too. But oh, other yeah. games are looking at console markets as well. I Very mean, so. yeah. Uh, look what Warframe's doing now that it's on console, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I, I, I play Warframe on PS4 as well, and it's in, great. In the <laughs> MMO market, you know, for the PC, you have a million options. For console, you have four, maybe? Uh, yeah. I think BDO's now coming out there, Warframe, this, and I can't think of anything else. Maybe Destiny? Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't yeah, know Destiny's I'm hemorrhaging Destiny. players. Well, yeah, but I'm saying that their marketing is a mess. That's yeah, but it, it's one of the options. It's just they've yes. they've, they've struggled with their marketing. They right. very hard. They, uh, yeah, uh, it's. I've played both of them, and I continue to sink my money into it. Um, for what reason, I can't tell you. I don't know if it's the fact that like they're like new content, and I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Like I need it all, and then I don't play it. Yeah, I, I mean, I got a lot out of one, and I, I played vanilla too. And then I was just like, I see where the cycle's going. You're gonna give me two crap DLCs. You're gonna give me one good DLC, and then you're gonna have DLCs. And I was like, I think I'm just good with saving my money until there's a collector's edition at the end for like thirty dollars, <laughs> and then I just yeah. get all right. Yeah. So right. no, I hear what you're saying, and it's just something that you do with older MMOs. It's not mm-hmm. so much attracting a new player base because you pretty much capped at a certain point. Not saying yeah. new players don't come in because they do. I mean, but, I yeah. play games that are eight, nine years old that I never played before ever, but sure. I, I'm a minority. You need to start shifting your focus from attracting new players to maintaining the ones that you have, mm-hmm. because by doing that, you'll still get new players. Right, right. Because, because you'll have word of mouth, and people be like, "Oh yeah, I yep. still play ESO after five, six, seven, eight years." Oh really? Yeah. I should give that a shot. But mm-hmm. if those players are hemorrhaging, new players are coming in and realizing, "Wow, there's no one here." You know, right? That's not a good look easily either. Of the case, it's just like, "Oh, it's dead." <laughs> yeah. So that's what uh-huh. I'm. I'm hoping they come in 2019. That it's not just more story, not more dungeons. They need to offer new systems new those quality of life that really get yeah. people in and playing for a long time like housing mm-hmm. despite the fact that i really don't decorate my housing that yeah. occupied a lot of those people's some, time for hours those are some good hooks for people they yeah. really got mm-hmm. people with that it's actually to a to a lesser extent because housing definitely was the big one uh, and and co- the costume things was like almost like a miniature version of that. Yeah. yeah. Like housing, it's like some people you have like Coco Michelle and stuff like that. It's like they yeah. literally just it's like, oh yeah, I don't do dungeons. I do the storyline and I I build houses. I just build houses all yeah. the time. And I'm yeah. just like that it's just a totally different set of play style. Mm-hmm. But it's like you want more of those hooks if you're gonna keep people going as you know the game reaches five years plus i feel like they're most certainly aware of this Mm -hmm. and i think if they're not they're doing something wrong but i also (laughs) think that like they are going to be busting balls in 2019 to keep people oh yeah yeah Yeah. i think they have made that abundantly clear (laughs) they're like we are making changes you are going to see them you will you may not like them in some aspects like with the racial changes like they're like, this is what we're doing to keep you here. To I keep forgot you about moving. that. That'll be interesting to see the racial changes. Yeah. Thing. So I don't think that they are by any means. If they're unaware, I think they're just naive. But I know that they're not. <laughs> yeah, they seem like they're on point. Whether yeah. or not they can address it or not might be a right. different thing. Yeah, yes. touch and finder. Uh, <laughs> but like, <laughs> they know it's there. Like, they're not mm. stupid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they do exactly. for a living. They know what they're doing. Yeah, and I think that we're going to... I. I hope that as we say all of this, and I say this right now, that we are going to see these kinds of things in 2019. Right. I, it's just kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to. It's definitely a point where I don't think they can go for another year with the On same just story. Their storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. No. Without hemorrhaging a lot me. of players. Right. Because then you'll, like you said, they'll fall into that. Like, okay, I'm back for the story. Okay, I'm done. And I guess yeah. I'm just done for now. Like, and yeah, but then you also got to remember 2019, 2020 is starting to become a big year for MMOs. I mean, especially if you like MMO playing, 
Um, I mean, obviously, I do another show on Ashes of Creation. That's coming out. That's been a big, mm-hmm. a big one. Mm-hmm. But another one, if you if you just like story, Bioware and Anthem. Yeah, which I'm yes. interesting, but yes. Be- I'm very curious on that because EA is an interesting yeah. beast. <laughs> EA is a EA, I agree, but yeah. you really it, can't argue that their storytelling is really good. Bioware has prem- really... Yeah, they're, and I think after um, Mass Effect Andromeda, they kind of have something to prove. I mean, granted, that was the Edmonton office, but like that was such a train wreck that I think they were kind of like, okay, like, <laughs> I mean, we need to save some, like, face and bring out our big guns now. See, it was a train wreck as far as, like, community goes, but I'm a diehard Mass Effect, and I loved every second of it. Did game. you really? I did. I am a diehard. That's funny. I loved the first Mass one. Effect. That's all I can say um, on the series. <laughs> yeah, so... I really loved the first one. But I am, like, there's a lot... I think there's a lot of good games coming out, and I think that they'll need to step it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. if they want to keep us. And that's for any MMO that reaches yeah. a certain age. You have to now that you're playing in the big, the big boy leagues or whatever, or you're mm-hmm. a little older, and all the new, the new things are coming out. You need to start showing why you're a veteran, and not just yes to the old fogey to be put out to pasture. Right. Right. So. Guys, so I, I think our conclusion, the uh, it's the the Kachit in the wilds of Skyrim with a new system. That's what we got. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that sounds perfect to me. I love that. All right, well, guys, I think that's going to be about the end of our show. Uh, so I want to thank my awesome co-host. We got Arkaneer. He's pretty cool, even though he slept through most of this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I am. Uh... Fade in fast, buddy. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, thank you, Arkaneer. We got Lotus of Doom. You can follow him everywhere that's Lotus of Doom, except for Twitch, which is Lotus OD. And Promethean, of course. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys for helping put this show together. You can follow everything we do over at DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There you can find links to all of our social media, including Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Be sure to check out our Patreon program, patreon.com slash DungeonCrawlerNetwork. If you want to help support the show, you can also leave us a five-star review on iTunes so people know that we are a real podcast, that we say real words. Sometimes they matter. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Tales of Tamriel, and we will see you next time. Have a great new year, everybody. See you guys. When Akatosh slew Lorcan, he ripped his heart right out. He hurled it across Tamriel, and the heart was heard to shout. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, Protect us till the end The laughing heart sprayed blood afar A gout on seer it fell And like a dart shot to its mark Down in an alien well Magic effused the lork in blood To crystal red and strong Then wild elves cut and polished it down to chimel at a ball. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end. When elves lost Nern to men, Akatosh gave the stone. To Saint Alesh in token of her right to sit the throne Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end